Hello class, in this video we will explore the effects of changing volume on a gaseous equilibrium mixture. We should be able to recall from chapter 7 that decreasing the volume of a gaseous system increases the pressure because it increases the frequency of collisions on the walls of the container. By changing the volume of a system, Le Chatelier's principle states that the system will partially oppose this change. Let's look at an example on the right to see how decreasing volume affects the equilibrium mixture. As we decrease volume, pressure builds up. To alleviate the increased pressure, if you look closely, equilibrium shifts to the left, favouring the formation of N2O4, which is represented by the blue particles. Why is this the case? In this particular example, the system partially opposes the increase in pressure or the increase in collisions by favouring the reaction that produces the lowest number of molecules to minimise the number of collisions or pressure. According to the chemical equation, there is one reactant molecule, but there are two product molecules. Hence, equilibrium shifts to the left or favours the reverse reaction, resulting in the formation of N2O4. Please note that changing volume or pressure has no effect on the value of the equilibrium constant. Let's observe the effects of increasing pressure on another equilibrium reaction. By increasing pressure, we know the system will partially counteract by favouring the reaction that produces less molecules. If we look at the coefficients, there is less particles on the products, hence equilibrium shifts to the right, favouring the formation of A4B2, and this is shown in the animation below, where the green molecules combine to form the purple molecule. This time, we're going to look at the effects of increasing pressure by tracking the changes on a concentration time graph. Because we are decreasing the volume or increasing the pressure, the concentration of all gaseous species for both reactants and products suddenly spike up as illustrated on the graph. Please note that substances that had higher concentrations to begin with will be impacted more by the reduction in volume. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will partially oppose the increase in pressure by favouring the forwards reaction because it produces the lowest number of molecules in an attempt to lower the number of collisions. Therefore, the concentration of SO3 increases. In contrast, the concentration for both SO2 and O2 will both decrease since the forward reaction is being favoured. However, we need to pay attention to the molar ratios as this determines the magnitude in the change in concentration. Since SO2 and SO3 both have the exact same coefficient, the change in concentration should be identical but SO2 goes down as it's being consumed. However, the coefficient of oxygen is 1 whereas the coefficient of SO2 is 2. Therefore, it will go down by half the amount SO2 went down by. Equilibrium is re-established when the concentration of each species then remains constant. Let's now look at an example where we're going to be increasing the volume. If the volume of the container was increased, this will decrease the pressure because the number of collisions on the walls of the container has also decreased. In response to a reduction in pressure, the system will partially oppose by favouring the reaction that produces the most gas molecules to regain some of that pressure. In this example, there are more molecules on the reactants, hence equilibrium will shift to the left, favouring the formation of A2B. Let's take a look at one more example using a concentration time graph. Increasing the volume decreases the concentration of all gaseous species as indicated by the sharp decline in concentration. SO2, which has the highest concentration to begin with, will be affected more. To compensate, Le Chatelier's principle will favour the reverse reaction as it produces the greatest number of molecules. Therefore, the concentration for both SO2 and O2 increases. Make sure when you're drawing the concentration time graph, the change in concentration for SO2 should be two times higher or greater than oxygen as it needs to be proportional to the molar ratios. On the other hand, the concentration of SO3 decreases and it should be going down by the same magnitude as SO2 went up. We have now looked at several examples of how changing volume disrupts equilibrium and have seen how the system responds to partially oppose this change. However, the system will only change in response if there is a discrepancy or a difference in the number of molecules between the reactants and products. This means that if the total number of gas molecules in the reactants are also the same for the products, Changing the volume of a gaseous mixture will have no effect on the equilibrium. As you can see in the two examples below, both the number of reactants and products contain the exact same number of molecules, hence there will be no net reaction. Additionally, I thought it might be worth reminding you that changing the volume of a system will have no effect on the concentration of a solid or a liquid. 
Let's consolidate our understanding by answering a few questions. In the first question, predict which direction equilibrium will shift and the effect on the amount of carbon monoxide when the volume is halved. Pause the video and resume again when you're ready to compare answers. To answer this question, I've started off by describing the relationship between volume and pressure. I then proceeded to say that the system will partially oppose the increase in pressure by favouring the reverse reaction because there's less molecules on the reactants. Therefore, the equilibrium will shift to the left. Because the reverse reaction is favoured, the concentration of carbon monoxide will decrease. However, the concentration of carbon monoxide will still be higher than its original concentration prior to the change in volume. The second question is made up of two parts. Part A is asking, what is the effect on the position of equilibrium when the pressure in reaction A is increased? Explain your answer. Give yourself around three minutes or so to come up with an answer for both parts of this question. If we're increasing the pressure of reaction A, the system will partially oppose the increase in collisions by favouring the reverse reaction since it produces the lowest number of molecules. Hence, equilibrium will shift to the left. If the pressure was increased for reaction B, the system will partially oppose the increase in collisions by favouring the forwards reaction as it produces the lowest number of molecules. Hence, equilibrium will shift to the right. This Vika question is asking how does the reaction pressure affect the yield of methanol? To answer this question, we need to talk about how both increasing and decreasing pressure affects the yield. Pause the video now to piece your answer together and resume again when you're ready to check your understanding. In this particular reaction, there's more reactant molecules than product molecules. If we were to increase the pressure of the system by decreasing the volume, the system will partially oppose by favouring the Ford's reaction because it contains the lowest number of molecules. Consequently, this increases the yield of methanol. In contrast, decreasing the pressure by increasing the volume will result in the system favouring the reverse reaction as it contains more molecules in an attempt to restore some of that lost pressure. Therefore, this will decrease the yield of methanol since equilibrium shifts to the left. In this multiple choice Vika question, the volume of the container has been reduced. Pause the video now and choose the correct concentration time graph. In this question, we can automatically cancel option A because decreasing the volume should increase the concentration of all gaseous substances which was not shown. Furthermore, there is the same number of molecules on either side of the equation. Hence, there should be no change in equilibrium and no net reactions. Thus, we can eliminate option D. From options B and C, the correct answer is option B because the sudden spike in concentration should be significant for substances that originally had higher concentrations. To conclude this video, I would like to finally talk about the effects of adding an inert gas on the equilibrium mixture. Since we're introducing another gaseous species, in this case helium, into the reaction vessel at a fixed volume, this increases the total number of collisions. However, because this doesn't change the concentration of the reactants or products, adding an inert gas has no effect on the equilibrium mixture, meaning there is no net reaction, thus the value of the equilibrium constant remains unchanged. This is the end of the video. Hopefully this video has helped you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye.